Greetings and welcome everyone to the Fellowship Bible Church Global Missions Podcast. And last week we visited and spoke with Augustine from the Host Store Bible Church. And this week we have the privilege and opportunity from uh, with, with visiting with another part of the uh, leadership team. Uh, we have Saji with us today. And so Saji, thank you for being with us. And tell us a little, little bit about your family and, and introduce yourself. Hi, my brothers and sisters uh, at the Fellowship Bible Church, Winchester, Virginia. I'm so happy to speak with you, meet with you, maybe after a gap of a couple of years. Hmm. So I'm excited to speak with you this, uh, this morning. Uh, I'm Saji Abraham, uh, and I pastor a church in uh, Osur, which is in Tamil Nadu, southern part of uh, India. So I've been a pastor for uh, for Osur Bible Church uh, more than 25 years. Uh, and uh, I'm married. My wife is, uh, official name is Elson Saji, uh, but uh, she's uh, well known in the name Joyce. Mm. Joyce, my wife's name is Joyce. That's how we know her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joyce, okay. And we have been married, uh, for more than 22 uh, plus years now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the 23rd year of our marriage. And uh, God has blessed us with the two daughters. The first one is uh, Timia, and she is 21 years old. And second one is Tanya, she is 17. Mm -hmm. uh, Timia is completing her univers university studies, like her bachelor's. Uh, uh, just, just she's undergoing her final exams now. She's planning to go for her uh, further studies, like post, we call it postgraduate studies, mm. maybe in a couple of months. Uh, and uh, Tanya is in her high school. We call it 12th grade. So she is just maybe this year, she'll be finished. Mm. So that's about my family. Yeah, that's great. Good, thank you. And so you are one of the, uh, one of the pastors there. There's the three of you, like we spoke um, last week in part one of our uh, conversation about the Host or Bible Church. And so there's you, there's Augustine, and then there's Hanson. Now, the Lord used you uh, many years ago to be the one that he worked through to actually uh, begin and establish uh, this church, you know, the church here in Host or so. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the origins, how did the, you know, the beginnings of the church and what were, what was it like, uh, you know, God beginning the church from the, from, from scratch? Uh, I finished my studies at Asian Christian Academy in uh, 1996, April. And uh, as far as uh, I, I know that uh, Tim McManigal used to come to Asian Christian Academy from 1994, 95, something like that, when I was mm -hmm. a student there. Uh, I met him and he spoke to us in the chapel and he has uh, uh, challenged us towards mission and things like that. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah. Uh, as soon as I finished my studies at the Asian Christian Academy in 1996, so there was a challenge to start a, a church here or a pioneer work here because. Uh, until then, Asian Christian Academy had only the, the theological studies. It was only a seminary. We never had any outreach or uh, mission work to okay. start churches. So uh, since uh, Tim challenged uh, the seminary to do that, and they were looking for kind of candidates who would uh, take up their challenge and start mm -hmm. a pioneer work. So, so I was uh, uh, given that task or you know, I felt that calling God has given to me. So from that time onwards, in, just after my graduation in 1996, so I started this pioneer work. Uh, to start with, uh, I am not locally from this place. I come from another state of India, you know, the adjacent state of India, which is known as Kerala, uh, which is different in language, culture, and uh, in many ways. So as I came uh, here and uh, started to do this pioneer work, so there were many challenges. Uh, first one was uh, the language uh, was the first uh, barrier. So 
So I had to learn language mm. and also get to know the people mm. and all the culture. So it uh, took some time for me to uh, really get into this kind of a, kind of pioneer work. So mm. first we started with a spoken English course uh, as we rented a, a hall, a kind of a room in the town here. And then uh, we also gave a free tutoring for the school going children. And we also started a reading room where people could come and read a lot of uh, materials like newspaper, magazines and uh, things mm -hmm. like that. So all this, we started just to get uh, acquaintance with the uh, local people here. So sure. uh, and study got us, uh, connected us with uh, local people here. And I, I was uh, uh, been helped by many students and uh, teachers of the seminary here who, who knew the local language in the initial stage. So like that, so we began and uh, then in 98, I got married. So until then I uh, continued to stay uh, at the seminary campus. And as I got married, uh, I and Joyce moved into this uh, town area. So we rented a house. Uh, then uh, we started uh, our fellowship or the small gathering there in our, our house as a house church. Mm. So it went on from so on, from 1998 to uh, 2004, it was in the rented house and 2004, uh, God provided us a place and we had a building here, uh, mm -hmm. kind of a permanent building for Husur Bible Church. And uh, Tim McManical was there for the opening of mm. the church building here. So then uh, uh, by 2006, God has brought uh, Hanson Manava, 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. Hanson Manava, he has completed his studies at Asian Christian Academy. So I uh, asked him whether he's, whether he's interested as he's a local person from the same state, mm -hmm. whether he was interested to join me in the uh, church planting ministry here. And uh, mm -hmm. he was willing. Uh, initially his father was sick and uh, almost a year he could not uh, continue to come as his father had some uh, bypass surgery for his heart. So then again, he came back and from 2006 onwards, he was regular here. And uh, 2007, God has uh, brought Augustine Armagam. He also studied at the seminary here, though he was part of the India Campus Course for Christ. So he came and uh, by 2007, our team has uh, grown. The leadership team from one person in 1996, 97 to by the time 10 years, 2007, the mm -hmm. team has become uh, kind of uh, three uh, right. uh, pastors. So yeah. that's how the church was uh, established. And we continue to God has uh, blessed us and we continue to grow uh, like that. And uh, that same year, 2007, we started a, a Bible training program, church-based Bible training program. Since we, all three of us were uh, seminary trained and we, we deeply believed that you know, God wanted to do uh, not, not just church planting ministry, but God wanted uh, us to influence the neighboring churches and people here. And we, uh, God has put a burden in our hearts to start this Grace Bible Training Center, which was a, okay. a kind of weekend seminary, uh, the church here. So from that time onwards, 2007 onwards, now it's almost 14th year, we are just entering wow. into that uh, Bible Training Center. Here and so we were able to uh, teach almost uh, 200, uh, more than 200. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, adults talk about you know, from mm. different coming from different church background mm -hmm. uh, who had a passion and thirst for uh, learning God's word systematically and also to influence their own churches mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, in whatever way God uh, allowed them to do that. So we were able to train them. Mm. Uh, so we did that all these years and God was faithful. We mm. continue to bring uh, uh, this kind of students to study uh, the Bible here at Grace Bible Training Center. So that is a mm. great testimony of God's mm. faithfulness. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about um, um, like your specific role there at the church. Um, you know, God put together, you know, began it with you and then brought you know, Hanson and Augustine. So uh, particularly, um, you know, what is, what is your role um, there, there at the church? Um, 
do you do you know most of the preaching on sunday do you do um what yeah so what what's your what's your um kind of primary role there uh that's a good question to be asked <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's a similar <laughs> answer. That's a similar answer you know, that all these people had. Yeah. yeah. In an Indian setup, a pastor is, a, we say, you know, jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, because in, a, in an Indian setup, a pastor needs to be everything, right? You know, he needs to be the sweeper, the cleaner, church arranger, a visitor, uh -huh. uh, and all that, you know, you, uh, and helper. Uh, because you know, people are so much dependent on pastors. Like for anything and everything, they uh, they would inform the pastor. They would call uh, the pastor. Okay, whether it's a big thing or a small thing. So that's yeah. it. so. Usually, maybe I was uh, doing that, and I was also preaching and teaching and all that. And as we three were there, we were taking turns in preaching uh, okay. most of the time. Uh, in the last uh, two years, Hanson almost more than a year. He moved into Ramakal and he's involved with his. Uh, uh, local church there where his dad is pastoring as his right. father is he's going there so last uh, couple of years it is only me and augustine uh, uh, so we mostly we take turns uh, but uh, mostly you now i as a what do you call church planter i have a supporting role than a, a leading role people okay. call me kind of senior pastor but i don't uh, we don't take it as a senior pastor or anything like that so okay. More of a, I would call myself like a Barnabas, and yeah. uh, and uh, Augustine is taking the role of Paul now. Okay. So okay. maybe teaching uh, that's his call. Like you know, his passion is teaching, mm. uh, preaching, uh, discipling. That's his pa passion. So I understand that. Sure. Uh, God has gifted me in various other areas, like you know, uh, uh, the gift of service, gift of uh, visiting, and uh, gift of encouraging. Mm -hmm. uh, and we singing or whatever, you know, whatever, wherever there is a lack, I find that you know I jump into that. Sure. So, uh, okay, so you uh, can uh, put me anywhere. So yeah. I'll keep you that yeah. Kind of. yeah. So, so I'm happy that Agustin is doing that since he's also from the local place and he's a local man who is able to communicate in the local language yeah. better than me. So I think so. God has put us together to complement such way, such a way. Right. Oh, right. I'm happy to see that he's uh, growing in his understanding of grace mm -hmm. and he has a clear message of mm -hmm. uh, grace and a passion to disciple. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. what he's good at, what he's calling. So I'm just giving him the, you know, to perform as per his call and his giftedness. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's similar to what, um, what Augustine said last week when we spoke, he said, um, that we, that all three of you kind of do do everything you know it's not like one person does one specific thing only but um you know but but uh you know but you know each one of you can do everything and so um it's it's and and that's i think that's healthy i think that's i think that's the way that um you know god set it up and god meant it to be so yeah yeah that's great um you mentioned the Grace Bible Training. Um, uh, talk to us a little bit more about that. Um, um, you know, who who can participate in the Grace Bible Training? Um, what's the content of what you teach in the Grace Bible Training? Um, how long is is it a specific specific program that people go through? How long does the program take? Um, talk to us a little bit more about, about that Grace Bible Training. Yeah, the requirement or the qualification to be part of the Grace Bible Training Center is that you must know uh, at least to read and write. Okay. Okay. So anybody, so we don't uh, keep any, but at least uh, they should be also kind of an adult in the sense. Uh, maybe, okay. Uh, so if you have a hungry heart. Hungry and, heart and. Interest, uh, just, hungry heart. And uh, number, no, God's are, word more. Okay. Even if they're teens, I mean, just maybe about 15, 16 years old, I just uh, passed out of the high school. Uh, okay, so they can participate. So we have uh, so students, 
coming from different church backgrounds here. So there are Anglican Church, Pentecostal Church, Brethren Churches, and uh, various uh, non-denominational, interdenominational churches here uh, in Hosur. So of the uh, no, the many of them we have never advertised about uh, this Grace Bible Training Center, but uh, our students, our previous students, were completed. Uh, uh, former students are uh, advertisement. They go and tell about this program. So uh, through that, we every year we get uh, some students uh, to study. Okay, so uh, okay. it's uh, in the, in the one year if if they study for one year where we introduce them to the Bible and we. Uh, take a, a survey of the Bible, 66 book, a, a survey, then theological survey is done. So that is the only thing is done in first year. So if they complete their one year of studies, we, we, we give them a certificate in theology that kind of okay. course. And they can continue to stay if they uh, study for one more year. That's, if they complete two years, then we give them uh, a diploma in theology kind of thing. So okay. But some, some people may not have sufficient time to continue. So in between, some may leave after one year. So mm -hmm. they can take their certificate in theology and leave. Mm -hmm. But still, God is leading them to study. So they get that uh, diploma. Um, many of them would say even for one more, they say that we want to continue to study. We do not mm. want to go away. So if they study for third year, then we would give them a certificate in Christian leadership. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, study. And... Uh, and there are other people who are already involved in ministry. Maybe they are from village uh, background. They have never got an opportunity to, to go to a Bible college or seminary mm -hmm. to study, but they are still in in Christian work or mission work. So such people, many of them would continue for another four year, another fourth year. Mm. So for such uh, uh, students, Bible students, we give them a bachelor in theology degree okay. in association with the Asian Christian Academy. Okay. Okay. And you and, and Augustine and Hanson are the one do, ones doing most of the teaching or all the teaching or? Uh, well, uh, now many of our uh, church uh, believers studied, uh, some of our elders also studied and completed uh, these four years of bachelor in theology course. And, uh, uh, and now uh, we are actually last year, we were almost six to seven of us were teaching. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so other than Hansen was uh, last uh, two years plus, he was not teaching here as he is in Namakal going and coming in Namakal. Right. Yeah, another, me, Augustine, and another uh, from our church, three or four people who are teaching, who have undergone this training, who have gone through our, our uh, you know, this creation to Christ and all this mm -hmm. discipleship uh, process who have completed. So we have uh, incorporated them into teaching. So mm -hmm. we are also doing with us so we don't have to take that all burden just we teach sure. when we are on course for yeah one, one yeah one hour yeah we have uh, every week i mean on sundays we have almost three hours of class so one hour we may teach and other hours uh, others may teach because uh, we had side by side we have almost three hours first year second year third year sometimes four years if all four years are there four classes are there so there will be one hour, four subjects will be going on. So we mm -hmm. need that many teachers to teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great that um, that you, through the years, have, you know, trained and equipped, um, you know, people within your church that now, you know, can turn around and, you know, be partnering with you and Augustine and Hanson you not not only to be teaching in the church but also to be teaching in the you know grace bible center um to be teaching others i mean that's that that's a, that's a wonderful thing that um god's you know enabled you guys to do and led you guys to do to be uh, training these other uh, leaders to be teaching others uh, that's 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 great yeah um share with us a little bit about um you know spiritually um you know how how's the, the you know the spiritual health of the church um you know the spiritual life of the church um through the pandemic um you know did you guys see um the the body of your local church did you see them being able to really stand stand firm in their faith 
um, during the during the pandemic? Uh, did you see them, you know, being able to to rest in grace and the finished work of Christ and the greatness of God, you know, during the pandemic? Um, or like many others, you know, were there struggles? And um, uh, I'm sure there are some of both. You know, some people were standing firm and some people were were, were struggling. But you guys have recently experienced a real second wave um, of the pandemic. Um, so my question is not necessarily, not necessarily about the pandemic per se, but, you know, just, you know, people's uh, faith um, in, in relationship with God uh, through the pandemic. Um, so yeah, talk to us a little bit about that and just the spiritual life of the church. Uh, we have a very, I mean, uh, as you know, that we are very uh, systematic, God-focused, Christ-focused, church-focused, grace-focused mm -hmm. yeah. teaching on, uh, on a regular basis. And many of them have also gone through the discipleship. So many of our church members are rooted in God's grace and uh, Christ's mm -hmm. finished work on the cross. And... Uh, uh, since uh, we never preached them any prosperity gospel, so they are always prepared for any adverse, uh, to face any adverse kind of circumstances. Okay. Uh, and uh, so many, even including in our uh, eldest team, there is an elder, his name is Emmanuel. Uh, uh, many times his faith has surprised us. Last uh, mm. four plus years, he is. Uh, undergoing chemotherapy for cancer. Actually, he was uh, very much used in our Thotagiri church. You know, we have a, a sister concern or sister church, mm -hmm. which is established uh, as a church maybe in 2015 or so, last uh, six to seven years. He was instrumental. He was part of our leadership team. He was so oh, excited. He was in his uh, 50, late 50s. This man, he was about to retire and he was so oh, enthusiastic. He was so hungry for God, and mm. he was. He said he was. He took up the ministry there in Tottakiri and said, uh, you know, he was visiting the village with his wife, and he was doing that. He, you know, and uh, he was diagnosed with the cancer, as he was very involved in the ministry. Uh, it was kind of third third stage of his cancer. Wow. And uh, last three to four years, more than four years, he is undergoing. I mean, this cancer treatment, the many chemotherapies, radiations, but his faith in the Lord has uh, surprised us. Now also mm. he's undergoing too much of pain. Like, you know, we, as elders, he called us last Sunday. He said, you know, Bible says, let the elders come and pray. So we mm -hmm. almost six to seven of us went to his house as elders and we laid our hands on him and prayed. And always his faith has uh, Kind of surprised us that you know mm. he is rooted in the finished work of Christ and his mm. struggles in life has uh, never uh, diminished his faith that he has in Christ and he is willing to face anything and everything. Mm. And so his testimony is a great encouragement. And says sometimes he is going through so much of pain, but you know he finds time for testimony, prayer, sharing, encouraging other people. He, wherever whenever he finds time. Mm. You know, he would uh, use that uh, even with the, you know he's going through you know, utter pain like you know mm -hmm. horrible pain in his, the spirit uh, in this pandemic time he was going through that and he was not able to properly receive his treatment for cancer mm. and things like that but even then his uh, faith has uh, not only encouraged uh, all the rest of the our uh, eldership team but even many of the people in our church, uh, you know, when he when the church was open in between the first wave and second wave, yeah. So he was coming with even with much pain. He was not able to sit, but he would come and sit in the church at the front of the church. Mm. And, uh, so that was a great encouragement. And I think mm. uh, so we saw that uh, no, 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 none of our believers have ever complained about the the problems they have. Though there are mm. difficulties, lack of work. Mm. Lack of food, mm. uh, you know, all too much of restrictions all around. Um, but uh, I think everyone was uh, trusting and resting in the grace of God and finished work of Christ. So, mm. uh, so uh, mm. it, it was a testimony uh, uh, to the, the the kind of teaching they have been receiving. Uh, so we praise God for that. 
And we are also able to help, you know, there were about at least uh, minimum 10 people who were uh, affected by, uh, who were tested positive, I meant corona positive, and they went through some struggles. As a church, we were mm. able to stand with them and help them. So uh, during this crisis, and monetarily, mm. we were able to help them also. So we praise God for that kind of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome to see. To see and God's work. More, in the I just world. wanted to, I just wanted to tell, you know, one of our, we, in 2017, we started a uh, new church. Actually, it is about okay. uh, three to four miles from the Press Hosur Bible Church. Uh, it's a bigger facility uh, where about uh, 200 people can gather together. So it is in a village area. And uh, one person from that village, he was a believer. He was going to another church. Uh, and uh, he started coming to our church uh, there. And his name is uh, Sirinivasapa. From that village where we have the new church, Grace Bible Church. So in Kalasthipalam. And uh, he, in the second wave, the initial time, he, uh, he was tested corona positive And he, uh, he had this... Uh, this lung pneumonia uh, okay. early in March, last March 22nd, uh, uh, he passed away. Oh, okay. And he was very involved in the ministry there in the, in the new uh, the village there, uh, the new church where we have. And uh, he was there every evening he, he, with his wife and children. He has three children there. He would come and help us and all that. Uh, and but he was very, uh, very firm in his faith, and his family, even after his death, his family, we had a Thanksgiving service uh, online, like you know, service. And his right. wife and his first daughter, who is just maybe 20 mm. years old, and her testimony was so amazing that mm. they come from a non Christian background, uh, and uh, they came and their faith, even though their daddy passed away unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but as a family, the testimony to the glory of God never, never, they ever said that Jesus did anything wrong to them or anything like that. Said that you know? So they praised God for the life of their father and said they praise God for taking his life, that mm -hmm. God has a purpose for him. So, uh, so they're so, uh, I mean, rooted in the finished work of Christ. And yeah. uh, we were so glad to hear that kind of a testimony. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's great to 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 see to see God's work in people's lives, and to you know see the evidence of their faith, and to see the evidence of you know the grace of God in their lives, and just rejoicing in you know knowing the goodness of God. And um, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. I know for you guys, as you know, you and you and Hanson and Augustine and then the other church leaders that are there, you know, when you see, when you see the body of Christ responding and rejoicing that way, I know, it, I know that brings you, uh, brings you great joy. It's not always the case, but when it does, when you do see that, uh, that I know that that brings you guys as the leaders, great joy. Um, you mentioned the, town of um i'll probably going to mispronounce it but totogiri yeah um, um now is that and then you also mentioned starting another church are you referring to the same places there with with starting another church and then also totogiri are those the same locations uh no okay can you tell us about Bible church. Yeah. okay um so <clears throat> so is um so so totogiri did that begin as an outreach or what how did how did that one begin uh when we started the postur bible church uh, in the initial years there was a lady uh, she was the only christian in that village totogiri her name okay. is Tayama. she began to come to our church from that village she was the only christian uh, uh, in her family as well as the whole village. So she began to come to Osir Bible Church and she wanted us to go to her house. And when we went, it was when some 20, 25 years ago, we went there 
uh, when we went there so many children in the village came around us and all that and uh, hands and uh, no, uh, later on we went and so uh, we began to have a children sunday school there on weekends like uh, sunday okay evening we would go there and uh, in uh, in her uh, house this time as house uh, we okay. used to have children teaching them songs and scriptures things like that mm. so we had uh, many years of contact there going and visiting there uh, many children uh, we ministered to children Uh, hmm. but there was we haven't started a church there but uh, it took almost you know only in uh, 2015 or so we thought that we must have a church there so we okay. uh, so we started a regular service because a uh, few few families were coming from that village to hosur bible church it's not very far maybe about uh, a mile from hosur bible okay. church but for village people without transportation even a mile is a mile if mm-hmm. any of them are walking mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. walking a mile is <laughs> uh, if you have transportation like in vehicles two wheeler four wheelers or all that you know yeah. it's not a yeah. distance but i think about people who are walking so we thought that instead of them walking to church so let's start a church in their own village and okay so that we can also continue to minister to the children there so we started there we put uh, Uh, pastor there uh, uh, and in this emmanuel i talked about one who got you know, affected by cancer he was also from 2015 onwards very much involved in that ministry and things like that so we had uh, a service there there were also there is an uh, 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 orphanage which was run by not a christian organization but an ngo and, okay okay so so they also came in contact and uh, they also wanted it was i mean that ngo this orphanage was run by a christian so he brought all the children from that uh, orphanage uh, to children sunday school as well as for the sunday service to thotagiri church uh, okay so this bible church so now due to pandemic uh, we are not able to have services there but they join us either for uh, online service or they would uh, 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 come to Hosur Bible Church since it is nearby. Sure. Yeah. So that is the Otagiri Grace Bible Church. Then that is 2015. 2017 uh, is the extension of Hosur Bible Church uh, because we wanted to have a, a better facility, a bigger facility for Hosur Bible Church to accommodate people. Uh, so we bought a piece of land and constructed a, a bigger church, uh, which is also known as uh, Grace Bible Church, but okay. that. village name is kalastipura okay one is totagiri the other one is kalastipura okay okay so uh, we have our main sunday service right now in kalastipura the bigger church and our uh, evening service we have evening service uh, sunday evening service that is in hosur bible church okay okay is the facility i mean the, the building is smaller in some I mean, the, the the size of the hall the mm-hmm. meeting hall is smaller Uh, there were only 50 people or like there only accommodated accommodated here in hosur bible church okay uh, that's why we have the evening service here and where does the grace bible ch- training take place in hosur bible church okay all because right. hosur bible church is in the in the town okay so accessibility for people to come here i mean uh, uh, with the transportation or without transportation people can right, right. come here in the church in Totagiri do you guys have a have a building there or do you guys meet in someone's home how does where do you guys meet in Totagiri yeah uh, we have a family there his name is Murugesh so okay. we are meeting in his house actually we helped him uh, to extend his uh, house a little bit okay so, so in the uh, so he has he extended his house and gave us a bigger room for us to meet in his house so it is uh, in murugesh kind of house we are meeting for the last many years uh, probably we mean the place a uh, common place for, for people to come and for sure yeah. maybe even place to come that's great that's great uh saji thank you for visiting with us um i know it's been wonderful for uh fellowship bible church for you know over 20 years now Uh, for over two decades to 
you know, to be able to be, be partnered with you and, you know, to see the beginning of a new work there and host or, um, and, and now, as you have described it, you know, with all the, the leaders that God has put in place, all the training that God's put in place, um, people growing in their, you know, their, in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and their spiritual lives that God's done there with, you know, the, the new location, the church in Totogiri and, and Grace Bible Church and, you know, still things going on there at Hosor and the town. It's just, it's just amazing to see um, and to be a part of God's work. And um, so it's just wonderful. So uh, thank you for just letting God use you in this way. And, and um, are there a couple, a couple of specific things that we could, and that our listeners can be, um, be praying for you, your family, for the work? Is there a couple of specific things we can, we can be praying about? Uh, first of all, I want to really thank and appreciate uh, ABC family for your uh, constant praise and support for almost two and a half decades mm. of uh, you, you are just you know just our family. We feel yeah. that you know when we come there, it's just not. So we are coming to our family. When we come to ABC, it's like coming to our family. Mm -hmm. so we thank you for the love and affection that you have showed to us and the, and the love that you have for the global missions and uh, we praise God for a church like uh, Fellowship Bible Church and for all the leaders and particularly people who are in missions. We thank you so much. And so please uh, continue to pray for us. We know that you know you are always you know that you pray for us. Yeah. Uh, you mm -hmm. pray for us and uh, pray for my family, my wife and children will continue to grow in grace and uh, mm. to, to, to a teenage or just more than teenage first mm. daughter is 21 second one is in teenage so we have uh, growing up all two daughters mm -hmm. uh, grow up in the grace and knowledge of God and will become mm. a blessing to the church and the nation and uh, the whole world we can pray for that uh, pray that they, we also have a kindergarten school uh, along with the Hosea Bible Church Mm. Uh, but, you know, we, we also teach uh, the children here. My wife is uh, part of that, and uh, she looks up to the school here, uh, which is under the Asian Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we also teach the children also the scripture here, even the, from the very uh, I mean, little age, you know, talk about kindergarten, whatever age is that. Mm -hmm. So it is, so it is so I pray for that kind of ministry that my wife is doing. We pray. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, concerning my family. My daughters have all great big uh, dreams. One, second one wants to be a Christian counselor. Okay. So she can counsel uh, so many people who are in need. This is a lot of people who are in need of Christian counseling. Yeah. So she's finishing her high school maybe this year. So she can pray that she'll become a you know, big Christian counselor. And okay. Uh, okay. First one also want to be serving the Lord in the days to come. So mm. please pray. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for the church uh, that we will continue to grow in the grace and order of Lord Jesus Christ. And mm. you know that you know, where all around India there is many people are after blessings. Many people don't want mm. the blesser, God. God is seen as a means to the end, which is blessing. So we always uh, teach that you know God is not the means, but God is the end. Mm. So, mm. and God blesses us so, so that we will know him. So he says, so, uh, we want people to know God in, yeah. uh, and, and the finished work of Christ. They will be rooted and grounded in the, the grace of Lord Jesus Christ. So mm. uh, we know that it's a very people to get that kind of a message in a world, particularly in India, where everybody is after blessing and uh, nobody wants to, the real teaching of God's word. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, all over the world is the same thing. People are only seeking God for their earthly life. That's right. So that people will you know, continue to understand the, the Bible. They will become a witness for Lord Jesus Christ. You can pray that our church mm. will continue to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. You can pray for you. You continue to have the unity because our church is a very unique church where uh, 
uh, in India, we have uh, English churches, only people from different language group and ethnic group would come to an English church and worship because it's a common language, it's English. Or most of the other churches are vernacular churches. One single language means those people who speak that language will come to that church. But our church is neither English church nor a vernacular church. <laughs> it's both. Okay. So it's, uh, uh, but just for the teaching and fellowship, people continue to come to our church. Okay. If they may not understand the whole thing. Like, you know, sure. they may not understand the song and something like that. So even though it's not an English church, but people who speak different language. Yeah. Yeah. Come together under one umbrella that is the grace of God. So we can pray that it continue to exist as a, as a testimony to that kind of unity among all the diversity of India, a particular language, culture, like diversity will continue to stand together because many people ask that question. How can, you know, it's not a one language, but many people, and even if it's not an English service, but even then you stick together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because you know that language bias is there. Uh, people don't understand your language means you know they don't want to have any association with you or something right. like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a testimony to um, just to the unity that comes in Christ. Yeah, to, to, it's so a testimony to, to Christ. Yeah, you we'll continue to have that. Uh, uh, so we can pray for that. Pray for our elders. We'll have very strong. Uh, we are in the process of. Uh, uh, maturing some elders and they were teaching them. Uh, they'll, many of them are, uh, apart from me and Augustine, others are all in, uh, you know, they are also working. Like, you know, mm -hmm. he says an elder means full time work, full time, you are a husband and as well as a full time minister. Right. Full time employee, mm -hmm. full time husband, and full time minister. So it's a challenging job for them. So God will give them that extra grace to complement. That's like three full-time jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Let me, um, let me pray. Uh, pray for you guys, Saji. Let me pray right now. So, Lord, we just really thank you for our time together uh, with Saji and hearing uh, of your work there in southern India, in the Hosur area, Chotigiri, and outside Hosur with Grace Bible Church. And just really hold Saji and Joyce and the girls up before you. And as, um, as, uh, as the eldest is in college and as the one is soon to graduate, and uh, seems like you might be directing her into Christian counseling. And so I just really give their family just uh, this clarity from you and what you have for the future for the lives of the girls and uh, for Saji and Joyce as they walk the path with the girls to <clears throat> what you have for them. Just, just to lead and guide them as a family and just lead them to rest and more them to be resting more and more in your grace as a family. And for the leadership of the church um, to just continue to be growing in the grace and knowledge of you as they look to mature, uh, see uh, men mature to be elders um, and and more leaders to be developed. Um, thanks for the unity that you've given to them as a church from different backgrounds, um, from different languages. Uh, but in, and we pray that that will just continue, that um, there won't be any self-seeking um, you know, fleshly tendencies going on within, within the church or within the hearts of people. But because of your work, the common, the commonality will be, be Christ, will be you, and the common goal will be you and not themselves. And then because of that, there won't be any, 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 any pride. There won't be any trying to exalt self but um, the church will just be able to continue to be unified um, despite the differences of language or, or communities or backgrounds. So we just continue to hold the church before you. Thanks for our global family. Thanks for our global, uh, our, our global church leaders and pastors. Um, 
whether it's in India or other places in Asia or Africa or Latin America, or even here in the United States. Thank you, Lord, uh, for giving us this time for the visit here more of what you're doing in, in, in their area of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Saji. Yeah. Oh, and just for you. our listeners. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Also. Yeah. And just for our listeners, um, next week we're going to uh, connect with uh, Hanson, who is okay. the uh, third member of the the leadership team last week was Augustine and this week was Saji and next week's going to be Hanson. And so it'll be the third part of this um, a podcast with the Hosor Bible Church leadership team. And um, just for a little teaser, um, Hanson has been in a different location for the past couple of years. Um, and so we'll look forward to uh, hearing about what God's been doing in and through Hanson and his family. Um, he originated in, in Hosur, but for the past couple of years, he's been in a different area. And so we'll look forward to hearing from Hanson um, next week. So thanks again for joining us. And uh, we will look forward to visiting again with you all next week.